Hello, in this video I want to show you how you can load film into the Nikon FG 35mm SLR. So it takes the standard 35mm film, ISO in you know, 24 or 36 exposures. And it's a little bit tricky to load because unlike some newer film cameras it doesn't really help you much doing it. Um, so what you have is you have your camera and here you have your little the rewinder, the little crank. What you have to do is you have to pull it up all the way up to open the door on the back. That opens the film door. So what you then have on the inside you have your uh, the spool holder, then you have your uh, guiding rails, then you have the shutter, don't touch that, it breaks really easy. And then here you have two different uh, two different things. One is you have this little like sprocket wheel, which is just the one that basically keeps the keeps the film going. And then you have the spool, the, the receiver, pr uh, pretty much. This is the tricky part because um, it's a little bit fiddly to get it in. So on your film, you have a little like pin here, kind of like a battery. It's kind of like the plus terminal on a battery and a flat side on here. This plus terminal or this pin, it goes towards the bottom of the camera. So it goes towards the bottom here. Uh, so this one goes like this. So just put this in. Uh, pull the ring up a little bit to help. It's easier with two hands obviously, but well, whatever. Uh -huh. There it goes. And so there's your film. That's the easy part. So after you put in the film, that's when the tricky part starts. Um, so the film goes between the sprocket and the receiver. On some cameras, some newer, some older, you pull the film all the way to the end and pull it in towards the end. But on this one it goes in between these two wheels. Uh, what's important is that this receiver, as I call it, this has little like grooves. Like you actually have little like pockets in which you put in the end of the film into. So don't just try to like pull it in between these two and then try to, to crank it up. That's not going to work. Uh, so you have to, and this is very tricky to see, you have to put in the, the film basically inside one of those uh, pockets or catchers as they call it. And what you then do is you then make sure that it sits the perforation at the bottom needs to be inside the, um, the the sprocket and then you can basically roll it in and then as you see it comes around the edge and that's it so it's when you first try it it's pretty tricky to get it right the important part is again it goes in between the two wheels and you really have to insert the leader into one of the the holes or pockets or whatever you want to call them on the receiver so don't just try to put it in there and expect that it somehow magically twists around automa uh, automatically it will not uh, after that you just close it and then you shoot a few frames until it goes to towards one um, it will not shoot at the proper shutter speed until it's at the first frame so don't be scared if you like uh, you know set this thing here to like you know a second and then it's still like uh, you know goes at 90 uh, whatever the other important part to do is on the uh, on the ISO selection ring you have to select the ISO of your film so in this case you can see there is a small red dot here and there is the, the scale over here. How, uh, what, what you do is you have to lift the ring. There you go. You have to lift the ring in order to rotate just the ring towards the correct ISO. Um, in my case it's an ISO 400 film so I don't actually need to make any changes but you have to lift the ring and then make the, the change that you want. It's a little bit fiddly to show this on camera but you see that the uh, red dot is now on like 400 something. Um, let me actually just set this correct. There we go. This is independent of the exposure control. The exposure control is being set by pushing the, the button here 
and then you can rotate the ring as a whole. This is setting the exposure uh, correction to like you know plus one, plus two, or anywhere in between, uh, or minus one and minus two. So this is this red dot over here. But uh, the the thing that you really want to check is make sure that the film ISO is set correctly. When the film is loaded correctly, uh, you can basically start shooting. What should happen is when you uh, advance the film, this crank should turn. If that's not turning, if this crank is not turning, then the film is not properly loaded. I actually made the mistake to shoot an entire roll of film to uh, only then figure out that it wasn't actually lo loaded properly and so I wasted the entire uh, roll in the end because I wasn't sure if I should you know just reload it or if I should just try to develop it or whatever so make sure you know that the crank turns when you advance the film and that's it it is pretty simple once you get the hang of it uh, let me just show you how the film rolls up I uh, do not open the, the back while the film is not rewind because that kind of destroys it. I'm using test film so that's perfectly like fine to show but yeah I mean as you see it's really now rolling into, an, uh, into a tight loop. If you want to rewind the film after it's done shooting there's a button at the bottom that's here of the Nikon. If you push that button in you can then turn the crank backwards so it's basically follow the arrow you can only do that when you have pushed the button otherwise it will not be uh, it will not be turnable or if you will you can turn it possibly by applying a lot of force but that will destroy your camera don't do that so, um, so yeah there you go